Hello everyone and welcome back to another UE4 video. Today, let's chat about the wonderful thing called macros. Macros are an often misunderstood concept and tool in the Unreal 4 engine. To give them a proper explanation, let's discuss them in two parts, their uses as opposed to functions, and their deeper performance impact. Macros act very similar to functions in that they are sections of code collapsed and placed into a box that they can be easily reused over and over again. However, unlike functions, macros have the power to alternate code execution. Whereas when functions are called, their code runs and leads to a single exit point, Macros can have code exit in a multitude of different points. This creates the powerful ability to defer functionality to different paths within a single macro, instead of the traditional route of using switch or repeated branches. Another unseen benefit to macros are that they allow the use of latent nodes within them. Latent nodes are nodes that delay the execution of code for a period of time before resuming. This is typically used for stalling while waiting for another event or system to do something. Oftentimes, a great analogy is used that paints functions and macros to be like factories. A function would be like a factory intended to produce a single type of product with one entry point and one exit point, while a macro would be a large scale factory able to produce many types of content, each with their own unique entry and exit points. Now that we understand macros and how they act compared to functions, let's understand what's actually happening under the hood. Beware though, a bit of technical jargon may be coming. Typically when functions are called, the system goes and finds the function, as it may be stored anywhere in the system, retrieves it and does what's called caches it, meaning stores it closer. Now that the function is close by, it is inexpensive to actually call over and over again. The problem with this, however, is that it is not totally reliable that it will actually target that cached function, and recaching it is very expensive, which is a concern short term, but isn't so bad long term. Macros, on the other hand, use a fancy process called inlining to save costs short term, but become very expensive long term. Inlining injects the code directly into the blueprint as if you just wrote the code normally. This method saves costs by avoiding having to actually perform the act of caching as the code isn't stored elsewhere, but becomes a problem as the actual blueprint size will grow rapidly if you continually call macros. Overall, macros are a fantastic tool to use when you have sections of complex code you want to repeat that have a variety of outcomes. However, use it sparingly as to avoid growing the blueprint to unimaginable sizes later on. And that's it! Thank you once again for joining me. If you liked this video or found it useful, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Most importantly though, Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below as I'd love to hear them. See you all in the next one.